Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the Motherland Experience. It's your girl Nye here and today I have a lovely guest in store for you. I'm going to be sitting down with the lovely Mr. Francis Conte and we're going to be experiencing his journey to the motherland from the UK, his amazing experiences and travels on the continent, and his wonderful connection to Royal Kingdom Estates as well. So sit back, relax, and let me take you for a ride. Hey guys, I am sitting here with this wonderful brother. We have been having a little bit of a chat, the two of us, and he is just absolutely awesome. So guys, please help me welcome Mr. Francis Conta to the show. Hi, Mr. Thank Francis. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. Oh <coughs> no, it's an honor. Thank you so much for being on the channel. So how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, that's good. I have to say, I love your accent. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm a sucker for British accents. I think your accent is lovely. So please, can you tell us where you're from in the UK? Uh, I'm from Croydon. Croydon. Yes. Okay. I'm not really familiar with Croydon. It's on the outs. It's greater London. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So were you born and raised in the UK? Yes, I was born in the UK. I lived there to, I think, 1973, when after my father uh, was called to the bar. We went mm. back to Sierra Leone to practice, and that's mm. where we all went to Sierra Leone. Oh, okay, okay. So you being from the UK, so you would you say we've, have you been like into Sierra Leone in terms of yes. what was your journey? I lived in Sierra Leone for fourteen years. Wow. Before returning back to the UK in eighty-seven. Wow. How was that for you? Oh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, mm. Many things I have today as a result of me growing up in Sierra Leone. Wow, wow. So I would say, so what's your ancestry? Is it, is, do you have Sierra Leonean in Yes. Uh, as I said, my dad's from Sierra Leone, my mom's from Nigeria. Mm, okay. So you're a little bit of a mix, yes. I guess you would say. Okay. Okay. So since you're, you know, you've spent time in Sierra Leone, your mom is Nigerian. So what led you to Ghana? Um, it was a time when uh, one of my, uh, uh, one of my sons mm -hmm. was, um, uh, brought to Ghana. He attended boarding school here at the Achimota Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And that's when I fell in love with Ghana. Oh, okay. So you fell in love. He fell in love with Ghana, guys. Okay. So what was it about Ghana that made you fall in love? I think the culture, the music, mm -hmm. the food, mm -hmm. the people. Um, I think it's a relaxed country. Things are, you know, people seem to be living with each other smoothly. Mm -hmm. It does seem like that, huh? It's like the minute you come here, it's just, mm. So give me one word to describe when you first set foot in Ghana. What was that one thing that hit your mind? It was like, wow. <laughs> Another African country, you know, it's quite developed mm -hmm. compared to um, other countries. I mean, like Sierra Leone suffered a war, so there's a setback mm. there. But here things are quite, you know, moving in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, they are. And so kind of like you being from the UK and the narrative that's painted up about the continent, how do you feel about that? I feel fine. Mm. I really do. And as I tell a lot of people, Ghana seems to be the place to be. I think mm. Ghana's opened up to the whole world. And mm. I can see a lot of people coming from the States, mm. from the diaspora, all coming to, you know, coming to Ghana. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, that's really, really awesome. So kind of like when you first came to Ghana, how long have you had a connection to Ghana? When was the first time you came here? I think it's about 20 years. Wow, that's a long time. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real long time. So you've had a connection to Ghana for 20 years. So kind of you already explained, you know, what's the difference between Sierra Leone and Ghana in terms of the development. What other African countries have you been to? Uh, I've been to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I've been to Guinea Conakry, I've been to the Gambia, mm -hmm. I've been to Tunisia, and I've been to Egypt. Wow, okay. I've been to Egypt too. Have you? Mm -hmm. Did you go to the pyramids? Oh, I did. It was so much fun. It really was. It was so much fun. So out of all the African continents, or countries, excuse me, that you've been to, what has, what have you picked up from, from each? Country. I think as far as West Africa is concerned, there's a lot of things in common in mm -hmm. terms of um, our cultures. There's slight differences, but we're more or less all the same people, especially when, you, when you're talking about West Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. It's kind of like the invisible borders are there, yes. you know, but 
Africa, it's like it's all one people, yeah. you know, and it's like, almost like, like, oh, you're from, you know, this tribe, you're from that, you know, country, but actually, you're one. And there's a lot of intermarriages. Yeah, yeah. So I find that really, really interesting. So kind of you traveling around, you know, the continent, you being, you know, living in Sierra Leone, you being from the UK, how is all this traveling and knowledge shaped you to who you are today? I think it's great. I think wherever you go, there are things you can pick up, things you can learn, mm -hmm. um, things you can relate to, um, things that I pass down to my children as well. Mm -hmm. So we never stop learning. Yeah, that is true. It's like my mom says, you never stop till you breathe your last. You know? And the food, <laughs> the food stuff. I mean, I know there's this big argument between jollof rice between the Ghanaians and the Nigerians, <laughs> but uh, if you taste Sierra Leone jollof rice, you will never eat Ghanaian or Nigerian jollof rice again. Oh, is that true? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, I want to have some. Oh, so, what's like the difference in the jollof rices? I Just think it's the preparation that um, we put more spices in ours. Uh, I think um, ours originates from the Senegalese and the Gambians who mm -hmm. I think the jello fries originated from there. Mm -hmm. Oh wow that's what I've heard that actually it's like a Senegalese dish mm. yeah and it's kind of like it's just gone like all over the continent and people saying oh I've, I've made it first so I made this one first so absolutely so listen so you're the connoisseur when it comes to jello fries yes we are. he's the connoisseur guys <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what's your favorite food here um in Ghana, I think it's be it's between two. I like the banku, I like tilapia, mm -hmm. I like the banku and the okra soup. Mm, okay, okay. So, would, what would you say would be the biggest takeaway from you being here in Ghana? In terms of? In terms of, I guess, saying, you know, because when some people come here from the diaspora, you know, it's a learning experience. You know, you go through different challenges, but you also go through different triumphs. So what has been the biggest takeaway from this experience for you? Um, my experience is Ghanaians have been very welcoming. Mm -hmm. I've had that welcoming, warm experience. Um, I've been running a football team in the United Kingdom for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And so when my son came here to Ghana, he was integrated into one of the local fo football teams in, in Abilengpe. Mm, so there okay. were a lot of young folks there mm -hmm. and then they made him welcome. They made me welcome and Aww. we just integrated. Uh, so would you say that you feel that you kind of like feel at home here? Definitely. Absolutely. Mm, would you say that you would feel you feel more home, at home here than you do in the UK? Um, I think there are pluses and minuses on both sides, but um, mm. as I've chosen Ghana as my retirement home, mm -hmm. I think Ghana is the place to be. Mm -hmm. Weather-wise, it's, oh. it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer, guys, <laughs> right? Come to Ghana. Ghana is the place to be. So with you, because you're a, you're a lawyer, am I correct? That's correct. Mm, how long have you been practicing law? Uh, over 20 years. 20 years. Wow. So you practiced law maybe like around the time you came here. You yes, started practicing yes, law? Yes. Mm, okay, okay. What's your specialty when it comes to uh, criminal defense? Ooh, okay. So he's criminal <laughs> defense. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so how do you like being a criminal defense lawyer? I absolutely love it. Um, mm. You come across different type of people, different cases. No mm. two cases are the same. And uh, for the firm I work for, Taylor Rose, MW Solicitors mm. in Croydon, we're a big firm all over the country. Wow. Um, so we, you know, we've, we go to everywhere in the UK, no matter where. Mm. Uh, I get woken up odd hours of the, the night to go to police stations, but I enjoy the job I do, working with young people as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some people, yes, they've committed the crime, but um, the weight of the prosecutions against them. So they need a defense. They need somebody to advocate and speak on their behalf. Yeah. And I enjoy bringing satisfaction to these clients. And there are many clients I've represented who've actually turned their lives around and I keep in touch with them. Oh, you know, wow. I, they refer me for mm -hmm. as a reference for jobs. And mm -hmm. here we are today. Uh, well, I can tell you have a passion for what you do, you Definitely. know, and kind of like it's a way, even though it's your job, it's a way of also giving back as well. Absolutely. You know, because 
it's not only, you know, you're doing that, you know, with being a criminal defense attorney, but you're also imparting into lives. So that's, that's the important thing. It Thank really, you. really is. So from you, I guess, being from the diaspora, how do you feel that people from the diaspora and people from Ghana can connect and really do something big together? I think it's a question of us bringing some of our expertise and knowledge to Ghana, mm. understanding, you know, their ways, their thoughts, their mindsets here and trying to meet each other halfway. Mm -hmm. take the good from there bring it here and we adopt some of the good things here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a healthy way to look at it i know sometimes foreigners feel like oh it's kind of like frustrating some you know end up going back to their various areas and some some people say that god is not for the faint of heart would you agree with that or would you disagree <sighs> i think my experience comes from growing up in sierra leone so mm -hmm. uh I would say I'm more African than, than, <laughs> than European. So mm -hmm. I understand. I understand it's a different type of system, but there's always room for change. There's always room to, to adopt uh, Western mm -hmm. ways. And there's, you know, the African way, there's some things we just have to hold on to. Mm -hmm. we, can't, we can't lose our culture and our heritage. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that, you know, because I think it is a thing of give and take. I think that we have something to learn from each other, you know, and really marrying that and you know i think would be awesome i really do i think would Thank be you. awesome so so guys you may not know this about mr francis but he is the chairman of the hoa of grace city phase two i've heard a lot about you i've seen your name and it's so funny us meeting face to face now i can match the face with the name Thank you. so how did you what you know came how did this come about with you with grace city with world kingdom estate how does that relationship come about? Uh, ever since coming to Ghana, mm -hmm. I've always looked at uh, purchasing land. Mm -hmm. uh, various offers came my way, which I wasn't comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I was introduced by a friend, Trevelyn. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Trevor and his <laughs> lovely wife, Evelyn. <laughs> he introduced me to Royal Kingdom and Estate. Mm -hmm. I went to Ebury. It was a no-brainer. Uh, the place is so surreal. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong. You just, yeah. you know, it's a must. <laughs> You're saying it's a must. <laughs> it's a must, guys. So what would be the biggest thing about Grey City that you would want people to know? I think our vision, our plan for Grey City Phase 2 mm -hmm. is to make it second to none. We want to make it a place where everybody's going to be happy. Security is going to be top priority. We're going to live together mm -hmm. in harmony. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be, to be the estate where everybody looks up to. Mm, wow, that's a lofty vision, but it can happen. <laughs> oh, definitely. It definitely Together can. we can achieve anything. Oh, amen. I, I would agree with you on that. I know I see you, you know, talking, you know, to people and the things that you have to say and impart, you're really about, you, you really have a vision and I think that you're a really good person to, to head it. Yeah, I mean, all the committee members, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're working extremely hard behind mm -hmm. the scenes. And it's a great bunch of people. And together, I think we're going to make Great City a place where everyone's going to really enjoy living in. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm jealous. I want, <laughs> I want a part of, of phase two. I'm sure it's an extension we can <laughs> put out for football people in. <laughs> Listen, can you fit one more in for me? <laughs> But the thing is, is I want to get it for free. <laughs> I speak to this with a daddy. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, some people, they, they talk about kind of like the, the infrastructure aspect, you know, kind of how that's going to come about, you know, with um, with the communities as a whole. But you can only speak about Great City Phase 2. So for people who have that question, what could you say, you know, to them about that? The infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, we're working behind the scenes. We're looking at quotations. Mm -hmm. uh, a committee has been set up. They're already working. Some of you last night would have received um, a questionnaire regarding those of you that have started your developments, those of you that are planning. Um, we are looking at figures. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to meet with the Ghana Electricity Corporation, mm -hmm. um, also the Ghana Water Board. Uh, we will be looking at uh, um, bids for the infrastructure, the cost of these infrastructure, and we're going to get the best deal for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to cost a bit of money. 
we shall be speaking to Royal Kingdom Estate about that. Mm -hmm. But I think in the end, um, it's going to enhance the place. It's going to enhance your property. Mm -hmm. Your property will increase tenfold once all these things are in place. And as mm -hmm. we said, security is paramount. Yeah, um, it is. We're looking at possible CCTV security personnel to man the place as well. Oh, wow. So, yes. Okay. So, you guys are getting it all together. We are. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm excited about it. I really am. I'm excited about it. So, what would you say would be, maybe this is a little bit far out, but you never know. What's like the vision that you have for Grace City Phase 2 in maybe like the next five years? Hmm, I hope in the next five years, everything is in place. Um, we want to maintain the greenness of the area. So yeah. we don't want to, we don't want to move away from that. But I hope, I hope within the shortest possible time, the perimeter fence can go up mm -hmm. so people can be rest assured that their properties are secure. Mm -hmm. um, electricity and water, I don't think that's going to be a major problem. Mm -hmm. I understand the Ghana Electric Board and the Water Board uh, are mandated to supply these things if 50% of the place is occupied. Yeah. Um, we might be able to negotiate with them and they can bring it there earlier. So mm -hmm. nothing's impossible. Yeah, nothing's impossible. I would just say, like, go go for the gusto. That's what I believe. <laughs> go for the gusto. And, you know, it's all in the Lord's hands. And he is he's definitely in the plan. And I'm, I'm excited about it. I really am. And like I said, you're a really wonderful person. It's in good hands with you being the chairman and everybody else. It's a part of the committee. I know it's going to work. I Thank really, you. really do. So one last question for you. What would you, any word of advice for people who are looking to come here from the diaspora, what would you, you know, what would you say to them in terms of coming here? Any words of advice or encouragement, anything like that? Uh, do your due diligence in terms of, is this the right place for you? I would say yes, especially if your roots are from the continent mm -hmm. or you're Afro-Caribbean. Mm -hmm. of you know from the uh, united states uh, even if you're not afro-caribbean i think Ghanaians are very welcome in place mm -hmm. we africa in general we like foreigners anyway and they're always welcome <laughs> to, they're always welcome on our continent yeah. uh gray city to me is the place to be there are lots of opportunities the, if you go to the area where they have their estates you know you'll be taken back by you know the beauty of the place mm -hmm. um the lands are going cheap so feel free it's a, it's a it's an investment that can't go wrong yeah that's true because i mean when you have a stake in land here it just it just appreciates so you know with you saying that about great city it's beautiful it is the rolling hills it's nice and lush i mean it's a it's a place to die for it's like you're in a dream it really <laughs> is yeah. So this has been a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for coming on the channel, Mr. Francis. You're welcome. It's just, it's been a pleasure. It really has. Now me first meeting you. And you it's too. Been a pleasure. The pleasure's mine. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks so for much. having me. Oh, of course. <laughs> and thank you guys for tuning in. And please do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this information with others. Until next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>